this is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosage, Lagos, Nigeria. And tonight we will be discussing anxiety, worry, when you're worried. Yes, worry, worry, worry. So, have you ever been worried? I know there's some of us that are even worried right now. And worry is an aspect of fear. And we know that fear is not from God because he tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Sound mind. Your mind is very important to God. How can your mind be sound when you're worried? Your mind needs to be balanced. Your mind needs to have the peace of God. Your mind cannot be at peace when it is worried. So we're going to talk about worry tonight. I'm going to give various instances in my life when I was worried and how God delivered me out of it. I know it's a big issue with, with people, even Christians, you know. It's tough. It's tough not to worry. You're a grown up. You have responsibilities. You have a family to take care of. You have uh, various responsibilities. You're trying to figure out how to pay your school fees or your children's school fees or how to make sure that the money you're paid from your company as a salary is able to take care of your family for the whole month. And uh, financial stress, emotional stress, health stress. Every kind of thing that you can worry about, yes, is, is pulling at you. So, that's why I want to talk about it, because it is very natural for the flesh to worry. But worry is not from God. As children of God, we have to learn to live by the Spirit of God. We have to train our spirit man to be disciplined and to live supernaturally. When you look at things and you just look at things being so hard, it's because you're looking at it with the eyes of your flesh. You're not looking at it through the eyes of your spirit. That's where your power comes from. From the spirit of God. God is spirit. So you have power from him to charge up your spirit, man. And that's how you're able to subdue your flesh. Okay, so I had a program over the weekend and I will teach about relationships, about whatever God has laid on my heart and reach out to people who are broken and are hurting. And so when I'm done talking, I'm going to ask them if they have any questions, then I answer their questions. So in order for there to be deliverance in your life, questions need to be asked. That's why when I'm done teaching on the God Girl platform, I encourage all of you to ask questions because that's the way you're going to be able to push through and understand how to function in your daily lives. When you ask questions to matters that are really disturbing you and you receive answers. So basically, one of the God Girls attended and she asked a question and I answered her question and Her departure statement, as she was going back to her seat, she said, easier said than done. That statement is right and it is also wrong. It is right because for the flesh to do everything that God wants us to do, it is truly easier said than done. But if it is your spirit... It is not easier said than done. It is easy to do. Yes, so you have to train your spirit man. That's what many Christians are not doing. So when you look at an obstacle, you get so worried, you get so overwhelmed. But when we look through the scriptures from beginning to end, the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we need to have faith. And faith is, the the definition of faith is is in the Bible, Hebrews 11.1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is difficult if you're in the flesh because you're trusting 
in something you haven't seen. It's just like believing in God. Have you seen God before? You haven't seen God before, but you believe that there is a God. So you have the capability to have faith. So you need to stay in that space. That part of you that believes in God, you need to stay in that space so that when you're reading his word, you apply it to your life and it, you make it believable. How do you make the word of God believable? You read it out loud. You insert your name in the scripture. You confess it out loud and believe it in your heart that what you're saying about words that were written centuries ago apply in your life. The word of God is alive. You have to trust the word. You have to trust the word of God. You have to live by faith. When you're reading your Bible, don't just read it as a story. Ask the Holy Spirit to open up your eyes and give you the power to live by this word. You're not just reading a story. You're not just reading something that happened years ago and it doesn't apply. It applies. It applies to your life today. It applies to my life today. So don't tell me it's easier said than done. The just shall live by faith. So you stand up and say, Lord, this battle in my life is really difficult for me. But this is what your word says. Your word says I should believe in you. Your word says if I have faith. That all things are going to be made possible. Because I have faith in you. So. I need your help. I need your help. Show me your power. Show me your glory. That's what you do. That's what you do. So why am I talking about worry today? Because we all get worried. But if you stay in that space of worry, you will never fulfill destiny. Your health will decline. Have you heard of high blood pressure? It comes about because you're stressing yourself out. Some people develop ulcers because they're stressed out. Worry is not good for your health. It's not good for your well-being. It's not good. Case closed. There's no way worry is good for you or me. And God does not want us to worry because worry means we do not trust God. That's just what it means. When you worry, it means you do not trust God. So let me share with you what I call my 911 worry scripture. In the U.S., when you have a health emergency, you dial 911 and they send out an ambulance to come get you. Let's say you're trying to deliver a baby and you're, you're home alone. So you call 911 and they send you an ambulance. So it's like the emergency number, not for only medical emergencies, but emergencies. So this is a scripture I go to when... Worry just wants to overwhelm me. And let me tell you the trick about negativity. I'm not saying you won't get worried, but I'm telling you not to dwell in it. As soon as you notice you're getting worried, go to the 911 worry scripture. This is mine. I'm going to read it to you. Matthew chapter 6 from 25 to 34. I'm going to read it all. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more 
clothe you, O you of little faith. You see that faith thing? O you of little faith. So that means if you're worried, you have no faith. Or you have little faith. Verse 31, therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Verse 32, did you see that? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. There has to be a difference between you and unbelievers. You hear unbelievers saying, I, I need to hustle. I need to hustle. You even hear some of them in the church saying, Lord, bless my hustle. What you hustling for? Bless your hustle? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles are doing things the opposite way from how we should be doing things. And what is the correct way to do things? Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. I just live by that scripture because it's God. I'm all about God. I'm seeking him first. I'm seeking his righteousness. It's not only opening up his word and closing it. I have to live in a way that glorifies God so that all these things that I need will be added unto me. Instead of me sitting down here worrying about this or that, the key is to be faithful to God, to seek God, to have a relationship with God, to love God. And he will add everything else that I need unto me. But the unbelievers, they're not seeking God. They're seeking everything else but God. That's why another scripture says you can't serve God and mammon. You can't have two masters. Money is a master. Materialism is a master. The world itself is a master. You're looking after the good life. That's your master. But if you're seeking after God, he will send you what you need. Verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Each, each day has its own trouble. So why are you worrying about the trouble that's coming tomorrow? There's no need to worry. That's what the word of God is telling us. That God is aware of everything. God is aware. God is aware. You're not alone. And so I'm going to share with you instances in my life that I got worried. And God provided for me. Even up till now. I'll say, Lord, my bank account is getting low. I need money, Lord, because I'm serving you faithfully. And your word says, if I seek you first, your kingdom, your righteousness, then you add all these things. Well, Lord, I need money right now, please. I need money to take care of some things. Thank you for providing it. And you know what he does? He'll touch someone's heart to transfer money into my account. I don't open my mouth to ask people for money. I don't go around saying people so into my ministry. I don't do that. It's not part of me. Okay? So, what I do is I ask my Jehovah Jireh for money. He says he'll supply all my need according to his reaches and glory. So, I, I like to ask him for money. I like to ask him for what I need. And I'm not someone that... <laughs> I'm someone who's easily content. I don't need a million. I don't need a million. If you have greed in your eyes, you can't serve God. But of course, there's a part of the scripture that says, Money answereth all things. We need money to survive. But don't let money be your goal. Don't be chasing after money. Build your relationship with God, and He will supply what you need. There was a time I was so worried about my finances and the Holy Spirit told me to go and meditate on the Lord's Prayer. And that's when that phrase, give us this day our daily bread, made sense to me. It never made sense. You know, you, it's a prayer you say growing up as a child. At least if you grew up in the Christian household, you know the Lord's Prayer. 
But I never really knew what I was saying. Give us this day our daily bread. What is our daily bread? What is it? Your daily bread is that peace that is enough for you to get through the day. It's not for you to win a lottery of a million dollars or whatever currency in your part of the world. It's just enough to get through the day. You have your clothes, you have your food, and you have shelter. You have the three basic needs of man. <laughs> food, shelter, clothing. You got those three things, you better be thankful. Because your daily bread has been supplied for that day. Some people don't have that. So God will get you through the day. And that's why the word of God tells you, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. There's already enough trouble in today. And there will be trouble tomorrow too. There's always something. Until we get out of this temporary place we live in called earth. So fix your eyes on God and don't be worried. Try not to be. You will get worried, but don't dwell in it. Don't dwell in it. Because when you worry, it shows that you do not trust God. So, one of my favorite trust exercises with God, when I was living in the States, you can ask any American, it's a life of bills. Bills, bills, bills. You're working, you got bills to pay. It's just the bills. Okay? So, one of my favorite trust exercises with God was to bring out all my bills and ask him to pay it. I know, it sounds insane. And sometimes I would even ask God to send me checks in the mail versus bills in the mail. Hey, you ask, right? Ask. So an example is right after we had Jasmine... We were expecting a hospital bill balance after labor and delivery and all the costs. We were expecting the hospital to they'll send you a bill after you, once you've arrived home. It's a payment you make while there, and then you pay another one once you get home. Anyways, <laughs> it turns out we didn't owe the hospital anything. Instead, they owed us. They sent us a check. It was, I mean, it was, like, surreal. I said, wow, Lord, seriously? Yes, by the time our medical insurance and everything came through, it was in excess, and they sent the excess back to us. I said, wow, this can only be God. That was the faithful hand of God moving. See, God moves people to do things for you. It's not for you to wonder and stress how things are going to happen. As soon as you find yourself worried about something, start praying immediately. If after the prayer you are still a little stressed, start singing and worshiping God. Praise and worship is like food to God. You can never go wrong with singing to God. I mean, how do you feel when someone gives you a compliment? You feel awesome, right? That's how God feels when you sing praises to him. You automatically put him in a favorable place to hear your request. You will feel better after giving all your problems to God. You will. So, if you're worried about anything, lay everything out on the table and ask God to help you. He will move. He always moves, and it's a great thing to behold. So stop stressing and start praying and praising. You gotta live by faith. You gotta live by faith as a child of God. You can't be a baby Christian forever. You have to step up and live by faith. You have to. So, another instance in my life one day I was heading home from yet another job interview. I was broke, but I didn't look it. I had a nice business suit on with great shoes, too. I needed to get an item from the grocery store, and I was a few dollars short. I scrounged around in the car where I kept loose change and was able to come up with the balance. I walked into the store with barely a dollar to my name. I was officially at the lowest financial point of my life. It really got me thinking. 
There I was, dressed impressively, looking like I had it all together, but that was me on the surface. Appearances are very deceiving, so don't look at anybody and assume they are happy or things are going well. Don't ever wish you were someone else. Everybody is going through one thing or the other. You don't know the battles people are fighting beyond the impressive clothes, cars, houses, and properties you can see. We all have a race to run in this life. There are seasons of joy and sorrow in everyone's life. There are high points and low points in this thing we call life. Comparing yourself to someone else will do nothing positive for you. It will keep you in a place of bitterness, defeat, discontentment, and envy. And none of these characteristics are of God. You have to stay focused on the only constant. Our unchanging and ever-loving God. See, one reason I love God so much is He accepts us as we are. He meets us right at our level. He's kind and He's gracious. Some friends will leave you in the hard times, but God never leaves. We also tend to leave God in the good times. Some of us don't have a need for God when everything is going well. However, God is the one who gives us all that we have. It is in the wilderness of life you will find God and cling to God because when everyone has left you, you will realize that God is all you have and what and all He is. God girls, cling to God. Look to God continually. He loves you in all seasons of life. He knows what you cry about, even if on the outside you are impressively put together. God knows and he is there to comfort you. I pray you find him in your distress. And when things become good again, you never let him go. God is everything. God is everything. Job 34, 19. Yet he is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. God loves you. Life may be hard right now. Do not worry. Do not worry. Give it all to him. Ask him to help you. He is Jehovah. He is the all-sufficient one, your provider, your healer, your friend, the one who sees you. That's what he told Hagar in the desert. He introduced himself as Jehovah El Roy, the one who sees you. He saw Hagar. He sees you. You got to know God. Study the names of God. By his names alone, you will know what, what manner of God he is. Emmanuel, God with us. Oh my goodness. God is here. God is real. God works. You just have to believe in him. You need to cast all your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Lay your burdens down. Ask him to help you today. What are you feeding your thoughts and spirit with? If you are not reading the word, God cannot assure you with his word. If you are not listening to his music, he cannot encourage you with it. Yes, God speaks with his worship songs. He can give you new songs or he can encourage you with a worship song that you sing from time to time or that you listen to. In your, through your CD player or however you listen to music. When you're worried, you tell him about it. He'll encourage you with the worship song. If you are not constantly seeking him and laying yourself at his feet, you cannot feel him. The touch of God is so gentle. His voice is so gentle. You can miss it if you are cluttered with the noise of this world. God is real and accessible. But to get a hold of him, you must separate yourself unto him and trust him totally. Surrendering to God is totally different from just attending church. It's not by being a church worker either. 
It's by giving God access into every area of your life and not just a little part of your life. See, some of us approach a relationship with God like this. God can visit you in your house, but He is only welcome in your living room. The kitchen, bedroom, home office, restrooms, other rooms, and crevices are out of bounds until you give God the keys to every room in your heart, both the strong and weak parts of you. You are not surrendered. You have to get to a place that you are desperate for God, for Him to manifest in you, like He did to His disciples at Pentecost. Before Jesus was crucified, Peter denied Him three times, showing that He lived in fear and shame. However, when the Holy Spirit came upon him at Pentecost, he was a changed man. He moved in authority and power. Peter became unstoppable but for the kingdom of God. It was the Holy Spirit that empowered Apostle Paul to say that he was not ashamed of the gospel. Romans 1, 16, he was beaten, imprisoned, and tortured, but he never backed down. When you see this in his word, don't you want it too? The disciples were human beings like you and I. They were different because of the power of God. You cannot get his power without totally yielding to him and having him work through you. So please, the word of God says in Romans 8, 14 to 16, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. No child of God has a reason to dwell in fear or in worry because our Father has assured us that He knows every detail of our lives. He cares about every little bitty detail. If He can take care of the flowers in the field, He can take care of you and I. So don't worry. Thank Him. Thank Him for your daily bread. Thank Him for your tomorrow. Thank Him for the good things He has done for you. You may not have much, but you have your health. You're alive. You may not have much, but there is something beautiful that has happened in your life. So thank Him for that beauty. Thank Him. Thank Him. Your marriage may not be going well, but He has blessed you with wonderful children. So thank Him for your children. Thank God for the good that he has done in your life. In the middle of life's disasters. In the middle of the mess that sometimes we have made of our lives. Beauty is still there. So thank God for the beauty in your life. Not everything is all bad. There's got to be at least one thing God has done for you. Even if it's just the life that you have. The breath that you have, good health alone. There are rich people who are not healthy and they're suffering. So you may not be rich, but you have good health. Hey, that's more than enough to thank God for. So ask God to help you trust Him. To put worry away, to put fear away, to live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Ask God to help you. Please Him by living by faith, by believing in Him. If you believe God exists, you have to believe His Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.1 1, 1. The Word of God that you're reading is Jesus in your hands. 
You have Jesus right here in your hands each and every day. So read this word out loud. Confess it out loud. Let it be alive in you. Let it kick away every fear, every worry, every concern in your life. Open up your mouth and sing a song of praise to the Most High God. For He's a good God. He's a gracious God. He has brought you up out of the miry clay. You better thank Him. You better thank Him because He could have been so much worse. This God is good. He is good. Father, I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for every woman on this platform. I thank you for everyone listening to this message right now, whether man or woman. Bless them, Lord. Remove worry from their lives. Help them to be mature in you, to live by faith, to run this race successfully to the very end. And Father, my prayer is, none of us and none listening to the sound of my voice will miss heaven. That Father, we will all make heaven and we will all see your glorious face, bow down at your feet and worship you. My Lord and my God, I thank you. Your name is worthy to be praised forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosage, Lagos, Nigeria, Ultimate God Girl. God bless you.